All right, what up, y'all? It's Matt Shop. So if you're ever working on a Briggs & Stratton motor and you run into one of these carbs right here, this is what they call a Flowjet carb, and it's the absolute worst carb design I've ever worked on. It sucks. Um, the two halves warp, so then it leaks gas all out here, and you can never tune the thing right. And if you see, you see how it's bulged up in the middle? It's warped because... The top part is so thin, and it's only held together with three screws. One, two, three. It warps like crazy, and it leaks gas out there. And you'll never, ever, ever get it tuned right. So the quick fix for this is, and it's a bit of a farmer fix, but it works. What you do is, now the proper way to do this would be to, to mill this flat, but then again, this part's warped here, and then you would have to mill that flat, and nobody has time for that. So the quick fix is, you double up on the gaskets. So you can see here, this is the um, original gasket that's supposed to be on there. And the guy didn't have the exact same one, so I had to enlarge these holes here, but it's not really gonna matter because the way it seals. But if you do this, make sure you get the, the right one. But I'm just concerned about sealing around here because that's where it leaks from. So you just double up the gaskets and you can see, um, why well, I had to modify it so that the gas passes through there but it's not really gonna matter on this back side because that's where like the bowl of gas is just sitting there but it has to seal good um, right here where these holes are so if you do this make sure you find the right one but I need this fixed so I had to get this one and modify it um, I'm gonna show y'all what it looks like with both of these on there All right, so you can see I have both gaskets on here now, and it's way thicker now, and hopefully it'll seal way, way better. But um, you can see why I modified it right there so the gas could pass through, because otherwise it wasn't right. So um, when you get the other half, and you put them together like that, you can see it takes up all the gap in there. And... Um, these are the worst carb design ever because they rattle and they get hot, you know, and they warp. And I've heard stories of um, people getting new ones out of the box, a hundred and whatever dollar carb straight from Briggs, and it's warped or it warps right after you use it and it leaks all over the place. So you'll never ever get your thing to run right with, uh, you know, a leaking carb because it's going to leak gas out and it could leak air in and it's just going to make a mess. So you can see that it takes up the, the gap in there and you're just going to have to crank down the bolts and hope you can get it um, tight enough to seal. But you can see the three bolts right there and it's obviously going to put uneven pressure on there and not seal right, but it's the best you got. So There's one more little tip I want to show y'all. If you really, really, really needed to get it to seal, what you can do is you can get this aviation gasket maker and put it around the edge of that gasket where the bowl is and make a little sandwich out of it. Um, maybe put it between the two gaskets, you know, around the edge so that it'll seal right. This isn't silicone, it's like rosin core and stuff and it, it's non-hardening and it, it makes a mess and hopefully it won't get in the car. but if you really have to, you can try to use some of this stuff around the edge in addition to the other gasket. Alright, so here's the last tip I want to give y'all when working on these carbs. You can see I have the emulsion tube out here, and these have a problem um, with leaking. So, it's another leaking problem, and this problem is so annoying, you're going to want to do this to fix it. What you can do is, right here you see, it has a Teflon sealing washer on here, and it's paper thin, it's like parchment paper thin. And there was a Briggs Service Bulletin PDF, I'll put a link in the description where y'all can find it. But um, it has part numbers for these little sealing washers. And what you do is you get one and you put it on there. And when you thread it in here, it seals. So it leaks on this mating surface right here. Those mating surfaces. There's one right here and one down here. And it leaks right there. And you can see it just goes on there and it seals it up. Without this, my whole motor would not run right. And you'll never, ever, ever get it tuned right. So when it goes in there, it'll seal and it won't leak gas. Normally what happens is, is it leaks gas all out this little weep hole right here and it makes a mess and it'll never run right. Alright y'all, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description because I'll link y'all up to all the parts I used in this video. 
and I'll link y'all up to that service bulletin because you're going to need to read that. Um, it's a PDF. You can read that and see exactly the part numbers you need for the little um, Teflon ceiling washers and how to use them. So make sure to check out the links down below in the description. And if this helped y'all out, make sure to drop me a huge thumbs up because this took me a lot of time, you know, to figure this out the hard way and read forms and trial and error and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to drop me a thumbs up if this helped y'all out. And don't forget to comment and let me know, you know, if this helped y'all out or if you know a better way to seal these things up so that you can hopefully get it tuned right. And don't forget to subscribe while you're down there for more videos of me putting this tiller back together and getting this carb all put back together and tuned up right. Because you're not going to want to miss that. Later.